Hey guys, this is Jake, and I'm here to launch a new part of our podcast. We have partnered with Off Hours Bourbon to bring you Off Hours with Bourbon Lens. And this is going to be a feature where we interview people from around the industry talking about what they do off hours. It's pretty simple. And we're really excited today to have Jake Ireland, the CEO and all things off hours with us today to, to kick off this first initial episode. Scott is actually out tonight. He's having some technical difficulties. So it's going to be the Jake and Jake show once again. So if you go back and listen to our first off hours episode from, you know, circa September of 2021, uh, we had this last time. So Jake, it's it's good to connect with you. And, you know, thanks for, you know, partnering with us to, to bring this new segment of Bourbon Lens to life. Of course. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for having me and excited to be uh back on here again, one-on-one with you. And, uh, yeah, excited to be kicking off this new segment and, uh, you know, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing the the guest on there and, and, and happy to talk about, uh, my off hours, your off hours, you know, everyone's off hours and uh, how they all differ. Yeah. And I, I think that's what's cool is we'll, we'll start the conversation on social media, you know, with, with some type of creative hashtag. We'll work with your team on, on that to, to get people's stories, right? This isn't just like a one shot. We want to know what's happening in people's lives because as me and you were chatting prior to the, the recording here tonight, it's when people gather around, they have a poor uh, and they're not talking about what they do in their day job. They're talking about their families, their lives, and what interests them outside of bourbon, whiskey, or beer, or wine, or whatever they do for a living. And so that's what I'm excited to talk to you about tonight as we kick this off. So, you know, you all are, what, two years into the brand now? Maybe three? Is that right? Uh, a year and a half. A year well, and a half. Yeah, not quite two. Yeah. So we'll, October, uh, October will make two years. So yeah. that'll be our, our two-year anniversary. All right. So you're moving and grooving and, and things are happening, but you know, in that there's a lot of life that happens, right? Your kids grow up, you have a lot of things going on. So what's, what's new in Jake's world from just like what you're doing outside of that bourbon and like that growth trajectory you're on with the brand? Sure. Sure. You know, every week, every week is something new, you know, as we were talking about before we hopped on here, you know, we just moved into a new house and a new area. We're you know, still in the Los Angeles area. We ended up moving back uh, right around the beginning of the year, right between Christmas and, and the new year. You know, we actually moved while we we all had the whole family had COVID, so that was, that made things really interesting. Uh, so we uh, we got over here to the new place, and and you know we had sold our own, our old house uh, furnished, and uh, so you know w- which was great. Where we didn't have a ton of furniture and everything to move was was nice on one hand. On the other you know, lead times for, for furniture and, and beds and tables and bar stools and you name it are, you know, six to eight months out. So we've been, we've been living minimalistic for now, but, um, it's been, it's been great. It's been a cool experience. You know, my son just turned five just about a month ago. So we celebrated that and, and, you know, he's loving the new neighborhood. He's got plenty of room to ride his bike and, and the T-ball fields are walking distance. So, you know, that's a lot of fun on, on Friday nights. And, and my daughter, she had her first birthday since, uh, since we last spoke and back in January, uh, was her birthday. And, you know, she's, she's growing, you know, like weed as fast as ever. And it's, it's cool to see, you know, who she's becoming and, and, you know, every day is something new and some, you know, new word that's coming out or, you know, <laughs> she's doing some crazy off the wall trick or something like that. But, um, you know, it's great. It's, you know, family's good. Off hours is as busy as ever. You know, we're, we, we are expanding throughout California, you know, as we speak, we we've just swapped uh, distributors. So, you know, we were kind of going direct to retail in the beginning and we've sort of hit a threshold where, you know, it just made a lot of sense to expand. And so we're with R and DC out here, nice. um, you know, that'll start here in, in about, uh, about two weeks or so from now, we'll kick things off with them. And, you know, we had, I'm trying to think we had launched Michigan, we launched Tennessee, and we're opening up Texas as well. Texas will be about a month or so from now. So we're just kind of getting all of our ducks in a row there. So um, yeah, expanding, expanding and like crazy. And, you know, things are good. We've, we've really kind of settled into this barrel pick program that we had just launched back in the fall. So that having that extra product there has been really nice. And yeah, man, it's uh, just hustling, trying to do what we can. And, you know, wife, family, everybody's good. Everybody's good back in the Midwest. And, and, uh, yeah, can't, can't complain. 
Yeah, no, that's awesome. And speaking of barrel picks, uh, we were lucky enough to partner with you on one as well. So be on the lookout. We have a, a barrel that I think is very unique from your all's lot. And so shout out to Ashley Barnes, who, you know, works with you behind the scenes at Cardinal Spirits and, and what they're doing there. So uh, really excited about that coming to market and partnering with you all on that that whiskey, because I think it'll really show the diversity of the stock that you all get to pick from uh, out in the marketplace. So really, really pumped about that. So when I think about, you know, off hours, like when you shut that computer down in the evening and, you know, the kids are off to bed and, you know, you're, you, you and Lauren are just hanging out, right? What, what are you doing? Like, how do you unwind? Like, how do you, you know, take that, you know, exhale to like, say, "Mm, it's been a good day. Sure. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of varies. You know, we, we typically, we knew that like uh, our best conversations as, you know, as a couple and everything, a lot of times is if we were going out to dinner mm. and a lot of times, you know, you know, you're there for, a, you know, a finite amount of time and you're away from the kids, you're away from, you know, all the other distractions and, and you're able to, you know, really kind of get deep into those conversations that a lot of times you don't get to have throughout the day because, you know, she's busy, I'm busy, you know, the kids are running around and everything. And it's like, you just forget to tell each other, Hey, here's what, you know, here's what's going on in in my world. Here's what's going on in your world. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times it was that, that sort of just hour, hour and a half, whatever it was that we could sneak away and and have dinner. But, you know, I think as, as, you know, uh, our son's gotten older and having our daughter and everything now too, it's like the, the time to be able to, you know, go out and have dinner, you know, once or twice a week, like doesn't happen near yeah. as much, you know? And, and I think that, you know, we've had to really try to find those times where, you know, maybe it's not dinner, maybe it's to try to go meet and grab lunch somewhere. Maybe it's time to literally just go for a walk around the neighborhood. And if the kids are with us, great. If, um, you know, family or someone's close by or whatever that can, you know, keep an eye on the kids and we can just kind of get out and get a few minutes here and there. That's, that's sort of, you know, enough. So it's, it's fine in those times throughout the day where you just have a little bit of a, a down period or, you know, an off hour here and there. So, yeah. um, but, you know, so I think that like, you know, at the end of the day too, a lot of times we're like, you're tired. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like you have, you have a long day and it's sort of like, man, I honestly don't even really feel like going to dinner. So it's like, you know, I'm like, I kind of want to just hang here and you can have a glass of bourbon and you can have a beer or a glass of wine or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And, and, you know, I think, so we've had to get a little creative with, you know, trying to figure out times to throughout the day to really just sort of, um, you know, get an opportunity to talk about not only, you know, work, but family life and the kids and school and this and that and everything. So it's, it's a little challenging, but it's, it's been, um, it's been good. And I think, you know, we recognize it and it's just sort of like, you know, I think you need that, you need that time to, yeah. to be able to sort of connect a little bit. And, uh, and who says, you know, whatever time of day it is, you know, it is what it is. You, 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 you got to figure it out. So yeah. that's, that's sort of where we're at. No, I, I definitely understand that. Um, you know, con- connecting and, and finding time is important, especially if you have, uh, you know, a spouse or, um, and, and me and my wife, you know, we started something new. We each take turns getting our son to bed and, you know, we'll go out on our back porch. Weather in Kentucky has been phenomenal. It's like zero humidity, but we've had a ton of rain. It's just really weird for, you know, the Ohio Valley. And, right. uh, we just sit on the back porch, you know, normally for, from seven to eight thirty, nine o'clock and we just catch up. Like it, it's just good, like for the soul to do that. And like, I think a lot of times we're on so often, right? Like we just mm-hmm. have to be on in front of people and like letting your guard down. Like, I think that's another part about being like off is like, you're not up for anything. You're just off and you're, you know, <laughs> that, that's good. Like, for no, the it's a, it's great. And I think that, you know, I think it's, you know, is it's a great idea. I think you guys have if you know that that's sort of, you know, that hour, hour and a half, two hour time period is, is yours. And, you know, no, it's inter- uninterrupted is great. Like I have a lot of, you know, a lot of close friends and family and, and others that it's like, you know, there's so many new series that are coming out between Netflix and Hulu and Apple. And there's all these different, you know, cool series that everybody's watching. And it's like, Hey, do you watch that? I'm like, uh, no, we <laughs> haven't got a chance to watch that. And it's like the next one, do you watch that one either? It was like, no, I didn't get a chance to watch that one either. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, we'll find a time to watch those. And it's cool to like have that opportunity to do it. But at the same time, when you're fighting for that, that hour or two hours or whatever it be to where like, 
you know that, you know, you don't want to stay up all night because you know, you're going to get up early and you know, it's going to be, you know, a, a, a day to hustle and the kids and all that stuff. It's like, I just want to like, I just want to have an hour just to hang out and not have to think about, you know, mm. think about anything to be honest, like, or overthinking about anything. It's like, I want to have a conversation, enjoy the moment and, you know, and just you know take it for what it's worth. And, and hopefully, um, you know, have a good time and, and, yeah. and do it all over again the next night, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that's the beauty of, you know, relationships in general, right? Like in those off times, you can be that real, true, authentic self with that individual and, that's what I'm excited about. Like these segments is learning that tr the true authenticity of people, right? Because so many times we're, we're buttoned up, we're talking to the brand and like everyone knows how bourbon's made at this point and everyone's mm -hmm. got a story. That's cool. Like I love that. And we're going to continue to produce the other podcasts. Uh, and that's going to be the main channel, but this is just an exciting way to get to know people behind the brand. So with that being said, like you're, you're off and maybe bourbon's not the drink for the night. Like if you're going non whiskey, like what, what are you picking up to, to enjoy those like off times? Oh, it, uh, it varies. I think, um, it honestly, I, I, I love to cook. I love to, you know, whether it's barbecue smoke, you know, baking, mm. you know, whatever you name it, you know, I really enjoy it. And I, I kind of like the, you know, challenge myself a little bit to, to try new things and, you know, try to make new things. So, you know, if we, if we're kind of depends on the cuisine a little bit, cause yeah. that my, my sort of thing is like, you know, if I'm, if I'm kind of after half, off hours, you know, all day and it's like, all right, well, if I'm going to cook dinner, then it sort of goes with it. So it's like, could be a glass of wine, could be tequila, could be a beer. Those are probably my, I would say my top three outside yeah. of bourbon that are kind of my go-tos. But again, it just kind of depends on the time, the place, the <laughs> setting, you know, what's going on. Uh, you know, a lot of times, like my wife's, a, you know, she, for the most part, she's pretty much a wine drinker. And like I'm trying to, you know, she, she'll drink off hours a little bit if I make a, you know, a cocktail or so uh, I'll give her that, or maybe she'll drink a spice margarita or something like that. But, um, but honestly, I'm kind of like, you know, I know that I, working in the bourbon industry, it's like, Oh, well, you got to be drinking off hours all the time. I'm like, well, not really. Like I, <laughs> I'm off hours for a reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm off hours. Yeah. I'm like I drink enough off hours as it is. Like I don't need to drink in the, all the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, you know, I enjoy other bourbons. I enjoy rye whiskeys, Kila, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Like, especially like just how close to home that kind of is with bourbon when you get into the, the reposados and the añejos and the extra añejos and stuff like that, where they're, they're aging it and, you know, yeah. kind of the similar backstory type of stuff. And then, you know, being from the Midwest, it's like, you can't, you know, you can't go without having a few, a beer in the summer. Like yeah. that's, that's it. You know? So, um, so yeah, it depends on, depends on the setting, depends on the time of day, depends on what we're eating. It's, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not picky. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So speaking of, you know, you mentioned beer uh, a little bit, right? You, you have some ties back to Michigan, huge beer city, uh, beer, beer state, really, in all honesty. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not too far from Ohio and Cincinnati, right? Like, and I know you spent some time there. You're a big Bengals fan. Um, yeah. Like they have Rheingeist and some other stuff. And then now Louisville's becoming a beer town too. You know, what's your favorite, like non domestic, you know, everyone loves a good lager every now and again, but what's your, like, what's your brewery of choice that you might pick up? I, oh, it's tough. You know, you just, the Rheingeist, when I'm back in Cincy, if you can get Rheingeist and, and uh, honestly, I don't, I don't get it back as, as much as I, uh, I hoped I would, if the Reds were actually good. pulling it together <laughs> the year. So yeah, I would, I would hopefully try to get back for some games there, but um you know, Ryan guys can't go wrong. Honestly, I think throughout the summer, like because we spend a lot of time in Michigan, especially on the west side of the, the state where my wife's from, Bells, yeah, you know, can't yeah. go wrong. Bells, two hearted, you know, can't go wrong with an Oberon, Centennial. Like there's, you know, I, those are probably my, my go tos. Yeah. Uh, and then Upland Brewery there in, in uh, Bloomington, yep. you know. They got uh, what do they got? They got a champagne velvet that's uh, it's really good, and they've got another. What's the name of it? I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's more of like a uh, summer shandy type of, yeah. you know, pretty refreshing in, in the summer. So it's got like a lemony twist to it. So yeah, yeah those are those are those are the go tos. Yeah, I mean, I just did a um, a weekend. Uh, my friend came up that I'm, I'm in his wedding coming up, and we we went 
uh, out in Louisville, but my wife and his fiance and some other folks were in Asheville. Asheville's a huge brewery town, right? Um, and it was funny because we hit just as many breweries locally in Louisville as they hit in Nashville on that day. Uh, and so, you know, <laughs> it was like, it was just a good time and you could do a lot of different things. And I think, you know, for one of the, one of those people who, you know, if you travel like in your off hours time, like try these different cities, try Western Michigan, try Asheville, try Louisville, try Cincinnati, because they all bring like unique different things and they all have elements of each other, like across of them. Uh, which is also right. really cool, which a lot of people don't know. Like, you know, in Michigan, there's a lot of good bourbon and whiskey being made uh, and sourced. Like same thing in Cincinnati. There's some really cool stuff right over the river. You can go to New Riff, yada, yada. Uh, and then in right. Louisville, obviously, Bardstown is 20 minutes. And then you have all the breweries. And one of my new favorite places to go is the Celsery. I'm not a big like Celser guy, like a Truly or anything like that. But we have uh, a company that has started uh, and they just make their own... Uh, you know, flavoring and they have mm -hmm. you know, purified carbonated water. And, uh, then they use vodka and, uh, tequilas and bourbons to make their, their seltzers. And it's, you know, really interesting and unique and a great way to convince the wife to come with you to the bourbon trail. There you go. Very cool. You know, I think that touching on the seltzer thing, it's like, that's something too, that it's like, you know, there's days that, that, you know, we always kind of have a variety, honestly, uh, you know, from seltzers to beers and everything in the fridge, but it's like, yeah, there's a day that it's like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel like having a beer too. And it's like, but I don't really, you know, feel like having a bourbon or, you know, a tequila or anything too. And it's like your seltzer, like quite hit the spot at that time too. And yeah. so it's like, you know, it's just funny. Cause it's like, I think being in the industry where, you know, it, it's just more or less like, you should be drinking bourbon the whole time. And it's like, well, that, not like <laughs> nah. off hours, off hours. Like, I, you know, I obviously we'll, we'll do anything, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, you know, there's days that it's just, you know, I'm not feeling it. I need to, I need to, you know, total, total honesty. It's just like, I, you know, there's days that it's a beer or a seltzer or tequila or wine or whatever it is. Like you have that, that time. And, but yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it's all good. Yeah, for sure. I definitely understand how that goes. And, you know, it, it, it is summertime and you mentioned your, your son plays some T-ball, you know, what, what sports are you into? Like what, what, like, what are your hobbies outside of, you know, being super dad and, you know, being, being a husband and brand owner, like what are your hobbies that you do? You know, the, the hobbies are dwindling, but it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, um, you know, I, you know, I grew up playing, you know, baseball and basketball and football and, and, you know, it was always in the mix of things and, and, you know, went to college, play baseball. And, and so that's probably number one. And, and, you know, I, I kind of always told myself that like, I don't know if I'll, you know, if I'll coach my son's team or what I'll do and everything. And now I find myself like I'm coaching my son's team and it's like <laughs> the whole thing. And, and so, you know, a lot of times it's, it's playing chauffeur to him to, to practice now yeah. and, you know, kind of be in there and, and doing that whole thing, which, you know, I love, I love to see that, you know, that he's, he's enjoying it and, you know, we'll see where it goes, but, you know, personally, you know, if I can get out, if I can, you know, golf every once in a while, like yeah. I, you know, I have a, I have a good time with that early on. It was sort of like, you know, you it, being competitive and everything. It's like, you obviously want to be as good as you can and everything but at the same time, you know, you think about even as a kid, it's like how, how many, you know, how many shots did you have to put up to knock down a few free throws or how many times, you know, it's like you, if you hit a baseball, if you get on base one out of three times, you're, you know, you're hall of famer. So it's like, uh, yeah. you know, so when I think about hitting a golf ball and you're like, wow, why can't I do these things? But at the same time, you're like, well, if I played, uh, you know, every day versus once every, uh, you know, six weeks, I'd be fine. Yeah. But, you know, hobbies love to get out and play golf. You know, my, my wife and I, it's like, we'll, we'll try to, to, to kind of pack the kids up. We'll go for some hikes around here and everything nice. like that and just get out and about, you know, I love to spend time at the beach. I wish I could say I was a phenomenal surfer, but I am not. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, honestly, it's just kind of anything to kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have to do, I don't have to be doing much, but just something to kind of, you know, just cool off a little bit and, and, you know, relax and, and not have to, to overthink the moment, I yeah. think is sort of where, where I'm at. So I don't need too many hobbies. Luckily I've, you know, I've got some good friends around the area and, and that live fairly close by. So we try to get their families together and nice. we'll barbecue and, and spend some time in the pool and, um, you know, play some games out back or whatnot, but, uh, yeah, not, not overthinking it too much. So is it bean bags or cornhole out there? It's cornhole. <laughs> 
it's going on. If I say some of my beanbags, I'm like, oh yeah, like, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I feel like yeah. uh, that that that's like a West Coast thing. We're gonna go play beanbags, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna not. No, play we're not. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pick my boards up and go somewhere else. Call it. Yeah, bags. exactly. I'm going down the street. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you mentioned you like to cook. Like, what's your what are you throwing down in the kitchen most often that you you know your is your go to meal. Ooh, go to. I love to grill. So um, grill and throw it on the smoker. So we could do, you know, we could do, you know, steaks. We could do smoked uh, chicken wings. We could do ribs. What else? I got a good halibut. A good halibut recipe. It's a little out there. Not a huge, huge fish person, but, uh, you know, I got a good halibut recipe. Um, you know, you got your, your taco Tuesday night, you got, uh, you know, you kind of go to's your staples that you, I yeah. think you got to have, but, uh, but no, honestly, I think the, I think I like grilling so much and smoking so much. Cause it's like a little bit you know, on some occasions, I say it takes a little bit longer. There's a little more of a process to it. And it's kind of like, honestly, like bourbon where it's yeah. like a little bit more of a process. There's kind of a lot that goes on. It's kind of, you know, a little bit of an art to it, I guess, you know, it's like, there's a lot of ways to mess up a brisket or mess up, you know, ribs or whatever it be. And it's like, well, you know, you gotta be a little, you know, attentive to it. And, and so I think maybe, maybe it's just a way to get away and and have another drink or two, but I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, smoking is not a a short process. Uh, that's, that's for, for sure. Yeah. I love to cook you know, our big thing's been fajitas on Tuesdays right now. Um, and so like we got one of those grill go. racks and you just kind of marinate your fajitas overnight and then you, you know, shake them up and throw them on the grill rack and, you know, you, you kind of shuffle them around a few times, but in like the, you know, the art of like having a sizzling skillet at home, like you went to well, your favorite Mexican spot and it's like coming out flaming. Like that's the one thing you miss about <laughs> fajitas at, yeah. at the house is like, I, I have, I don't a, have the equipment or the stove that gets hot enough to produce that skillet thing. Right. <laughs> so, and the, and the fire department's on their way fairly yeah. quickly. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah exactly. I've either burned myself. Yeah. My kids are running around. I'm afraid that you know, they're going to grab something or yeah. yeah, the smoke alarm's going off and you're just like, Oh God. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I, th- I think Mexican restaurants probably have the smoke alarms turned off. Uh, but that's, yeah. that's another topic for another day with their insurance, uh, provided. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so as, uh, you know, just closing this out today, you know, just getting to know you and, you know, it's, it's always fun to connect. I had a lot of fun the, the first time we did this, you know, if, if you could, you know, give your one piece of advice for someone that's like, just kind of getting off hours, like what's your piece of advice for them to get out and, and just do something for them? That's a really tough question. Cause I'm putting you on the spot with it, but like, I feel like this is how we're going to end every podcast moving forward is like, what's your piece of advice to, to get off the grid or get away uh, from your day yeah. to day? No, I, you know, I, I love it. Cause I think this is one of the, you know, really one of the priorities, one of the main reasons that the whole off hours name really kind of, when we thought of it was just like, all right, like, I think this is, this is something that's really cool. And I think there's something to this. And I think that, you know, kind of regardless of what you, what you do for a living, what's your background, where you live, you know, what's going on uh, in the world. And, you know, we all come from different you know, walks of life and everything, but we all have our off hours. We all have our downtime. We all have, you know, that time where we can set our phone down or we can close our computer screen or we can hopefully shut off for, you know, a few minutes one way or the other. You know, I think it's more or less like, you know, finding your occasion. So I think that, you know, whether that's, you know, maybe, maybe you work a nine to five job and, and, you know, you sort of cherish that time where you're done for the day and, and you get to, you know, go stop at happy hour and, you know, go meet up with your friends or, you know, or even go meet up with total strangers for that matter. Or it's that lunchtime that, you know, you, you get to step away and kind of do your thing. Or like we were talking about where it's like my wife and I, it's like, we may get 10, 15 minutes or whatever it is to go for a walk or whatever it be. It's like, I think it's, it's finding that time and whatever, you know, whatever it is that's unique to you Mm. and to your, you know, to you personally, or to you and your, your, your girlfriend or your spouse, or, you know, whatever it be that, or your family that, you know, is different for, for everybody, but we all have it. And I think that it's, it's understanding that taking advantage of that downtime. I think that there's a lot of times where it's like, 
you know, you can kind of do it and it's like, maybe you get used to it. Maybe, you know, that's just our thing. And it's just sort of like, that's what we do. But at the same time, like there's, there's so many opportunities to have conversations, to create memories, to, you know, to build lasting memories for that matter of, of really that kind of quality time that you get that you may never know if you get again. So it's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta take advantage of that. And I think that that's where, I think that's where like, for me and for, you know, what I want to, you know, build with off hours is like really kind of that idea that like in your off hours, like just because, just because we, we don't all get to do this together and we don't get it all do it the same way. And it is what it is like, but I want people to like realize and hopefully take advantage of the fact that like, you know, spend them in your way, spend them, you know, however, however it fits your life the best, but like, cherish them. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully you, you get to build the memories and you get to build the, the relationships and everything out of it that, you know, are hopefully lifelong and that you, you, you know, you get to do something that, um, you know, that again, that you, you may never know, like you, you got to cherish the moment. Like, yeah. and that's where I think like, you know, we created the whole, like it's built for the moments in between. It's like, it's, it's the between moments that I think that count a ton that, maybe get overlooked. Yeah. And I think that's where, that's where we're, we're trying to get this is like, again, like we, we just want people to to come together and, you know, build a community around it and, and understand that, you know, bourbon is one thing and, and everything and everybody's you know doing has crazy hectic lives these days. But like, if we got all just kind of slow down a little bit and enjoy each other's company, yeah, then, you know, then I think, uh, you know, then I think we'll be in a good spot. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's great. And, you know, I think everyone should steal a few moments in between their drives or their commutes to download this new series of podcasts that we have and, and, you know, find that we're going to find some off hours with some individual people along the way, but, you know, we're really excited about this partnership. I think it's a really cool way to tell a story. Um, Bourbon has a lot of dark secret holes that a lot of people don't know about it because all you hear is from the brands. You don't hear from the people behind the brands as much. And so excited to pull that veil back and and let people know like what's going on, not only in just in the industry, but even in our lives, right? Uh, it's, It's really easy to get veiled by, Hey, we're just going to talk to you about another brand, another brand, another brand. Uh, and you're going to get to learn a little bit about Jake Scott and and some other people along the way. So we're really excited. You know, Jake, thank you so much for, for joining the first and inaugural episode of off hours with bourbon lens, uh, for everyone, it's going to be in your regular feed. So, uh, as long as you're subscribed to the bourbon lens, this will show up on Wednesday and we're really excited about this partnership. Uh, you can follow Off Hours at Drink Off Hours, like on all social medias. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, go find them. Uh, you can also find Jake if you want to go uh, do that. I'm sure he's available and he'll let you be his friend. <laughs> and as always, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, tic- Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and every other social media at Bourbon Lens. And we're really excited about this. So uh, when you get a chance to listen to the first one, like, rate it, give us a five-star review, and we'd uh, greatly appreciate it. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.